Okay, in today's video, I'm going to go over an example of how we use Kirchhoff circuit rules, circuit law, to determine the magnitude and direction of the current in the branches of a little bit more complex circuit. In a previous video, I made an introduction, explanation video of what Kirchhoff's rules are, how we apply them, some of the things we need to be thinking about when we do apply them, and also I've made some additional example videos which you can use for practice, and you can find links to all those videos in the description to this video below. Okay, this is the circuit we're going to use for this video. We have a 25, a 30, and a 15 ohm resistor. We have a 45 and a 75 volt source. And we're going to determine 1, 2, 3, the currents, and the direction of the currents in those three branches. The first thing we're going to do, step number one, is to identify the nodes and label the nodes, N1. The other node is node number two. Step one. Now, step two is to identify current and direction of current in each of the three branches. We have three branches, and we're going to start here at the top. We're going to say that that is current number one, and that current flows in that clockwise direction. The second current, we're going to identify in the second branch, which flows across from N2 to N1. And the third current flows in that direction clockwise through the third branch. We'll call that I3. So we have three currents, I1, I2, and I3. I want to point out before I go on that the direction that I chose for each of those currents is completely arbitrary and somewhat random. When we calculate the current, if we calculate the current and we get a positive answer, we'll know we chose the correct direction of the current. If we calculate the current and we get a negative answer, it doesn't mean the current is negative or less than zero, it just means we chose the wrong direction for the current. Okay, that is step one, identify the nodes. Step two, identify the currents. And step three is to identify the direction that we're going to go around each of the loops so that we can apply Kirchhoff's voltage rule. Now, we have two loops. We're going to say this loop up here and this loop down here, and we're going to go around each of those loops in the clockwise direction. Now, we also have this outer loop, which we could call loop number three. We could use that, but in this video, in order to solve this problem, we do not need that outer loop, okay? Now, we have done the things we need to do to be able to apply the rules, and now we're going to apply the current rule and the voltage rule. We're going to start out with the current rule of each of the nodes, N1 and N2. The current rule, of course, says that the, the sum of the currents entering the node and the sum of the currents leaving the node are going to be equal to zero, or the sum of the currents entering and leaving the node are going to be equal to zero. So we have I2 and I3 entering this node, and I1 leaving, so we have positive I2 plus I3 minus I1, and we can rearrange that equation to solve for I1, and you can see we get I1 is equal to uh, I2 plus I3. The sum of the currents in equals the sum of the currents out. There's only one leaving. Do the same thing at N2. We have two currents now leaving and one entering. One is I1 is entering. That's positive. Two leaving, I2 and I3. We can rearrange this equation to solve and get rid of the negative signs. We get the same equation we had above. I1 equals I2 plus I3. Now, when we have the same equation at, the sa at different nodes, then we only need one of those equations. We're not going to use the same equation twice, obviously. So we're just going to get rid of this one. We'll just say that we're going to use that equation from I1. Now we're going to apply the voltage rule at loop number one. And for loop number two, we're going to do that with the assistance of Ohm's law, Kirchhoff and Ohm. Okay? Now we're going to start with L L1, loop number one. We're going to go around this loop in the clockwise direction. I'm going to just start here in the upper left-hand corner. Go across, we encounter this 25 ohm resistor. We want to sum up the voltage drops and the voltage gains. Now, we don't know the voltage, but we know the voltage is equal to the current times resistance. We know the current is I1, the resistance is 25. When we go across this resistor, summing up the gains and the drops, we're going in the same direction we designated for I1 or the current in this branch. So that's a voltage drop. So we put down minus 25. This minus sign means we're going around the loop, in this case, with the same direction. And we encounter that resistor. We're going the same direction that we designated for the current through that resistor. Okay? So now we continue around, and we go this way, and we're going to encounter this voltage source. It's a 45-volt source. We're going for the negative positive terminal, so we write down plus 45. Now this resistor 30, once again, we're going with the current, going downstream, so to speak with I2, so this is going to be a voltage drop again. So now I'm going to put down minus 30 I2, that's the last element, so then we sum those up and equal them, set them equal to zero. Okay, so there you go. Got to keep your negative and your positive signs straight. Remember, this is I1, this is I2, it's not the same current, even though it's the same loop, they have different currents. So that's why this is I1 and this is I2. 
Okay, we're going to do the same thing down here. We'll just start over here and again. Now, in this case, when we encounter the 30 ohm resistor for this loop, we're going against the current. The current we designated for I2 is 2 from right to left. Now we're going clockwise. We go around. We encounter this resistor going from left to right. We're going upstream, so to speak, against the current. That's a voltage gain. So I'm just going to write down 30 I2. Okay, this is minus 30 because we're going with the current. This is plus 30 because we're going against the current. Now, once again, we encounter the 45 volt source, but we're going from positive to negative, so we're going to write down minus 45. Okay, now we continue around this loop and we encounter this 15 ohm resistor. We're going with the current again, so it's minus 15 I3. Then across this other voltage source, which is 75, it's minus 75, and back to where we started, equal to zero. Okay, so there we go. We have all of our equations we need. We have three unknowns, one, two, three. I1, I2, I3, we have three equations, one, two, and three, and we should be able to solve for those currents. Now, how are we going to do this? Once again, this becomes kind of a, now kind of an exercise in algebra. Also, I want to point out, I didn't put down like 25 ohms and 45 volts. I left off the units because we got enough symbols and numbers and things like that. We know if we apply the rules correctly, our answer will be an ampere. It just makes it a little easier, a little cleaner. Okay, so you'll notice that this equation has I1 and I2. This equation has I2 and I3, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to solve this equation for I1 in terms of I2. We're going to solve this equation for I3 in terms of I2. And then we can substitute those values into this equation and solve this equation for I2, okay? And you'll see what I mean in just a moment. Okay, so we're going to start with this equation. We're going to solve this equation for I1, and we're going to get, first of all, we're going to move the other two elements to the other side, the other two terms to the other side. We have minus 45 and plus 30 I2 when we move these two to the other side. And we have minus 25 I1. We're going to divide all three terms, of course, by minus 25, and we get that I1 is equal to 1.8 minus 1.2 I2. 45 divided by 25, or minus 45 divided by minus 25 is 1.8. And 30 divided by minus 25 is minus 1.2 I2. Don't forget your minus signs. Okay, so I1 is equal to this. Now we're going to solve this equation for I3. And we're going to move the 45. Well, I think I combined the minus 45 and the 75 to 120. Minus 120 is 120 when we switch it to the other side. Move it to the other side. Same thing. We change, change the sign. 30 I2. Divide all three terms by minus 15. We get that I3 is equal to 120 divided by minus 15 is 8. Minus 30 divided by minus 15 is plus 2. So it's minus 8 plus 2 I2, or 2 times I2, obviously. Okay, now we know that I1 is equal to this, and I3 is equal to this, and we can take this equation and rearrange this equation and solve for I2. We get that I2 is equal to I1 minus I3. We know what I1 are. I, I1 is, we know what I3 is, we can substitute those in and solve for I2. Okay, so here's the three equations we had from the previous page. I'm going to take this equation and move it down here. I2, I know I1 and I3, I'm going to substitute these values in for I1 and I3. I get that I2 is equal to 1.8 minus 1.2 I2, that's this term. And then it's minus I3, and this is a negative sign, so we got to put minus, we got to carry the minus through sign, the minus sign through, so we have minus this term. So the first thing I'm going to do to simplify this equation is to carry this minus sign through this, or distribute this minus sign through this term. And I get 1.8 minus 1.2 I2 plus 8, a minus times a minus is a plus, a minus times a positive is a negative, minus I2. Now I can combine these terms, and I get that. I2 is equal to 9.8. 1.8 plus 8 is 9.8. Minus 1.2 I2 minus 2 I2 is minus 3.2 I2. Now I'm going to add 3.2 I2 to both sides. I get 4.2 I2 equals 9.8. Divide by 4.2 and I get that I2 is equal to 2.3. Okay? So now we have the first current, I2. That's a little bit of algebra. And you can see we have a positive answer. That means we chose the correct direction when we arbitrarily chose this direction for I2. I2 is flowing from right to left and is 2.3 amperes. Okay, now the rest of it is a little easier. You can see we have I2, 
we have I1 is equal to this term with I2 in it, I3 is equal to this term with I2 in it, now we can simply substitute those values in and solve for I1 and I2. We'll do I1 first, of course, makes sense. So we get 1.8 minus 1.2 times 2.3, which is the value for I2, and we get that I1 is equal to minus 1 amp pure. Okay, so you'll notice here, once again, as I point out before, there's a minus sign. Doesn't mean the current is less than zero or the current is really negative or flowing in the negative direction. It just means that we chose this direction. That means that's the wrong direction for I1. When you have a negative sign, it means it's flowing in the direction opposite that you arbitrarily chose at the very beginning. So I'm going to take those two arrows out. I'll show I1 flowing in that counterclockwise direction. Okay, now we're going to do the same thing for I3. Plug the values in. Solve for I3, and we get minus 3.3. Once again, the minus sign tells us this current that we chose arbitrarily, this current direction we chose arbitrarily is the wrong direction. It's actually flowing in the other direction, and that means we're going to plug the put the blah, blah. It means we're going to switch this direction of the arrows. And there we go. We're all done. We know that I1 is 1 amp and flows counterclockwise. We know I2 is 2.3 amps and flows from right to left. I3 is 3.3 amps and also flows in this counterclockwise direction. Okay, there you go. That is the magnitude and the direction for each of those currents in each of those three branches. We applied Kirchhoff's rule. We followed the steps, went through everything step by step, wrote everything down, take care of our negative and our positive signs. And I think if you do that carefully, you can solve those problems too. Okay, thank you very much for watching. I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, please do all the following three things. Uh, give me a thumbs up for this video. Leave me a nice positive comment section. In the section. Leave me a nice positive comment in the comment section below. And subscribe to my channel. Get all of my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Thank you very much for watching. We will see you in the next video.